everyone. Thanks, Wendy, for the introduction. Um, my name is Jasmine, and today we are going to talk about the topic filial piety. Um, I'm not sure whether many of you know about filial piety, but today we'll be um, covering what is filial piety, filial piety in Chinese culture, filial piety in Western culture, how filial piety relates to Buddhism, um, the filial piety sutra, Siddhagava Bodhisattva, and how we can practice filial piety here and now. So what is filial piety? Um, filial piety is a virtue of a child to his or her parents and elders, both living and deceased. It is a universal virtue, um, not only prevalent in Chinese culture, as many of us think it is, but it is also prevalent in every other culture. But let's have a look at it in Chinese culture. So the word filial piety in Chinese, the character is xiao, and it's a combination of the character lao, which is, means old, and it is above the character zi, which is son. And so actually it is if you put the two together, it is an elder being carried by their son. So here is an image of um, filial piety common in most Chinese cultures, where you have several generations living under the same roof and um, cohabiting like in the same house. So. In Chinese culture, filial piety is thought to be the first virtue and has been the foundation of our culture for several centuries. Um, it's seen common as, um, in most religious beliefs, not just Buddhism, but all different religions. And for the Chinese, it is taught from a very young age and includes a respect and care for elderly family members Children, especially sons, are obligated to be responsible for care and to carry on the family name. And in Confucian philosophy, filial piety is the most important virtue because filial piety determines the moral value of a person in his society, which is the key reason why Confucianism was so popular and dominant in Chinese history because the devotion of one's, of one's parents to one's parents was often associated with the devotion to one state, one country. So here we have an image of filial piety in Western culture, where you have a son leaving for college and the mom saying bye and... <laughs> so... So filial piety in Western culture, it's a bit different because in Western culture, they value individualism and independence. So family obligations are ex less explicit. And unlike the teachings of Confucius, there are no explicit texts on filial piety in Western culture. But you can see examples examples of filial piety in the Bible. You have the fifth commandment, which says to honor your father and your mother. And the relationship with God as a father denotes a relationship of love and respect. And Judaism and Christianity both affirm respecting one's parents. But um, although it does seem like Western culture doesn't value filial piety with children leaving home and then they have to fend for themselves financially after they turn 18. In today's society, you do see Western families still care for their elderly parents. So now we've seen the differences between Western and Chinese cultures. How does filial piety relate to Buddhism? So in the past, many people believed that Buddhist monks ran away from their duties of filial piety 
by renunciating. And early Buddhism is often thought to be, have little emphasis on filial piety because a Buddhist was thought to sever all family ties and detach from all material wants in order to achieve enlightenment. And even Theravada Buddhism, it contradicted Confucianism by um, its emphasis on the individual rather than an interdependent society. And Confucianism highlighted the good of the community more than the good of individual, the individual. So um, when Buddhism was introduced to China, it was redefined to support filial piety. So in Chinese Buddhism, you have the Alambana Sutra and the Filial Piety Sutra, which both emphasize filial piety. And there are many stories that relate to this um, that, are spread across, that were spread across China at the time. Um, Buddhists and Confucianism devotees both emphasize the importance of interpersonal relations, the three bonds, father, uh, ruler and subject, father and son, and husband and wife. And as well as the five constant virtues, benevolence, righteousness, proprietary wisdom, and fidelity. And Buddha's, Buddha, and Buddha educated his disciples and reinforced filial piety through his teachings. He educated them to be filial to his, their parents in their present life, as well as their past seven lives and all sentient beings. So one of the important sutras in Buddhism is the Filial Piety Sutra. And literally translated, it is a sutra about the deep kindness of parents and the difficulty of repaying it. Um, we have several copies of the sutra, which we can pass around later for everyone to read. Um, the sutra teaches the importance of understanding parents' kindness, particularly the mothers, and repaying their kindness. It explains the difficulty of repaying parents' kindness, unfilial behaviours of children, and the mystical hell into which unfilial children are doomed to fall if they are unfilial. But, and it explains the way in which one can repay their parents' kindness. Um, it describes in detail the hardships and labour experienced by parents bringing up their children, and the efforts of a mother are described in graphic detail. In the sutra, it is said, the virtue of one's parents' kindness is boundless and limitless. If one has made the mistake of being unfilial, how, difficulty, how difficult it is to repay that kindness. And also the loving kindness of parents can never be compensated, even if one were to carry one's parents on the shoulder without putting them down for a hundred or a thousand years. Um, in the sutra, there are ten types of kindness bestowed by the mother on the child. And it describes in detail um, the mother's physical and mental sufferings while the child is in her womb. It describes in detail the formation of a child in the womb. And when the fetus takes the form of a human, when the sutra existed, even in the Tang dynasties, 589 to 906, a long time before even modern science and medicine could, had discovered these facts. It describes the pain and exhaustion of labor and contrasts this with the joy of having the baby, the love and affection parents have towards the baby, and the kindness that does not leave until her life is over. The, uh, the kindness described in the sutra reflects the unconditional love a mother has for her child that is universal regardless of a mother's social status. Um, the unfilial behaviours are also described in the sutra and include having no manners and scolding siblings and when children become rebellious and arrogant and do not obey their parents. And when um, daughters marry, they move to another town and cut ties with all their parents. And the sutra, therefore, explains the reason for filial piety, for children to show their gratitude by repaying their parents for their kindness, care, and love.
Another important sutra is the Sutra of the Original Vows of Sitagaba Bodhisattva, and it is known as the Canon of Filial Piety in Buddhism. He made a great vow, if the hell is not empty, I shall not attain Buddhahood, and not only pointed out to us a road to achieve Buddhahood, but gave us hope in the Dharma. So during the Ju July lunar month, when it is Siddhagaba Bodhisattva's birthday, devotees will carry flowers at the temple, offer flowers at the temple, and chant the Sutra of the Original Vows of Siddhagaba Bodhisattva. And by paying gratitude to their ancestors with their blessings, they wish that ancestors and deceased family members could be liberated. They also hope to follow and bring the spirit of Siddhagaba Bodhisattva into practice by practicing filial piety and liberating all sentient beings. It is said that Siddhagaba Bodhisattva can help and nurture us, taking on the misery of all sentient beings. So how can one practice filial piety here and now? Master Xing Yun has written extensively on filial piety. He describes filial piety as the most genuine expression of family bond. It is the due responsibility of the self to others. It is intimacy between people. And he describes filial piety with the following analogy. When parents are young and useful, their sons and daughters fight for their attention, like a basketball. After middle age, their children push them around, like a volleyball. Finally, old and incapacitated, their children kick them away, like a soccer ball. I left home to become a monk at 12. I have no children of my own, yet my disciples are more loyal and dutiful to me than any children I would have had. One day I too shall be old. Yet it is obvious that they are going to hold on to me tightly, not letting go of me like a rugby ball. So, Master, so as Master Xing Yun has said, one does not only need to be filial to one's parents, but one should be filial to one's friends and all sentient beings. In today's society, those who care for the aged and raise the young do so out of a sense of filial piety. Compassion and joyful giving are fulfilled through a filial heart. It is something that we should have for others and is integral to all relationships. Filial piety is an expression of sincere gratitude we feel towards life and the repaying of kindness without regrets or complaints. So Master Xing Yun says that today filial piety is to actively care for our parents to relieve the elderly of loneliness, and even to solve problems facing the elderly. And he says only this can be considered great filialness. So if we look at this image, parents, they didn't leave you when you were young, so don't leave them when they are old. So, in looking at filial piety, did our parents complain when they lacked sleep while nurturing us as children? Did our parents complain when we did not behave as young children? And did our parents ever complain when they let us back chat and rebel as teenagers? One should repay our parents with good deeds, compassion, and love. To love and appreciate your parents, we are often so busy growing up, we forget that they are also growing old. 